why did you decide to go on a second gap year? Have you solo travelled before and how do you deal with travelling alone? If you were taking your gap year this year, COVID, what would you do? How are you funding it? Part-time work or savings, etc. How did you overcome any worries you had, for example, seeing your friends go to grad jobs, etc. How do you find learning a new language? What are your tips as an adult learner? Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I thought today I would answer all of your gap year travel Portugal related questions since I've had a lot of them since I've moved. So I hope this video is helpful. Grab a cup of tea and let's get into the video. So I asked you guys on my Instagram post and then on my stories to send in any questions you want me to answer. BP underscore Amor asks, why did you decide to move to Portugal and live alone? Are you working during this pandemic? So why did I decide to move to Portugal? I think I've got several of these questions from lots of people. Um, I decided to move to Portugal because it, I always planned a gap year. I've planned this gap year for the past, I wanna say three years, three and a half years. <laughs> I always knew that I wanted to take a gap year after uni. And yeah, since I knew I was gonna do this within the past year when I started planning it, before we knew about coronavirus, I always wanted to spend at least two months dedicated to learning a language because as I've said before so many times, I have a language goal of being able to be proficient in at least five languages by the time I'm 30. So I have six and a half years. So, and Portuguese is one of those five. So I wanted to either move to, well actually, actually that's kind of a lie. Uh, well, it's not a lie, but <laughs> I'm missing out some important information. Essentially, in my, in this gap year that I was planning, I actually planned on moving back to Italy for these two months. Uh, to work on my Italian because uh, Italian is also one of the one of the five languages and I really love the language and I have studied it for a year at Oxford at the language centre but um, yeah my, my Italian just wasn't that great and I have forgotten a lot of it ever since I left Rome last December. So I wanted to go back to Rome initially, well no not to Rome, to Italy and it was either going to be Rome or Venice but then um, I decided that I couldn't go to Venice as much as I wanted to because October and November are the peak flooding seasons and I really didn't want to be in Venice during that time. So I was definitely going to go back to Rome and I'd found myself a proper flat in Rome and I knew, I just, I, I planned everything to go to Rome and then I thought, you know what, maybe not, maybe I'll go somewhere else, maybe I'll go to Lisbon instead. I can't remember the reasons why I decided not to go to Rome in the end, but I thought it just randomly popped into my head that I've always wanted to learn Portuguese and I've never actually been to Portugal, I've never been to Lisbon before so why not just go to a completely new place and try somewhere else and that's how I ended up in Lisbon. Why did you decide to live alone? I decided to live alone because <laughs> I've had really bad experiences living with other people both in Oxford and in Rome <laughs> and this gap year is all about me, it's about self growth, it's about personal development and I just wanted this time to be for me, I wanted it to be really sacred and there's always a gamble not knowing who you're going to live with so I just decided to take the plunge and to just live alone for these two months and just I, I'm really glad I did because I love it and yeah, yeah, that's why I just had really bad experiences in the past. Question, are you working during this pandemic? Yes, I do have a job, I, I work remotely. So yeah, I I'm very grateful to have that job, I am working. How to find accommodation abroad? So yeah, this is something that I was going to do a blog post on about my finding accommodation in Rome when I did my term abroad. <clears throat> this isn't COVID, I promise. <laughs> I just haven't had a lot of water. <laughs> So finding accommodation abroad, I think I'm going to do a whole blog post on this if you'll find that useful, but essentially my main tips are to join lots of Facebook groups <laughs> before you before you go. I honestly would spend so many hours the month leading up to me going to Rome um, and even <clears throat> before I came here. I would spend so long just looking and saving all these accommodation, all, the, all these flats and rooms that I really liked. Um, so I'd recommend doing that, I'd recommend posting in these Facebook groups, but also looking on certain websites. Um, there's a bunch and it depends on which country you're looking at, but I will put together a blog post and hopefully you can find that useful. Do you have any recs for things to take on a gap year, especially with COVID? I'm taking one after I finish year 13 and I'm low key terrified. I could either do a whole video on this or a blog post. Maybe a blog post will be useful because I've got lots of things on my blog anyway to do with travel and gap year. Um, but my recommendations for taking gap year with COVID at the moment would be to just have plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, plan whatever. Have like several plans, backup plans. I definitely have several backup plans. My plan A for my, my gap year is not happening. So I've got plan B, I've also got plan C and I've got plan D. Plan Z is like the last resort is to come back home. So, but I've got loads of other plans uh, lined up just in case. So I would say just have lots of plans, uh, lots of backup plans and also 
decide what you want to do in the gap year if it is traveling it's better to base yourself in one place than try and travel around a lot because with covid you literally never know uh, what's going to happen but also if you did want to try and get some traveling in when they do ease restrictions which hopefully by the time you take a gap year they will um just make sure you i would just say the key thing is to be really flexible not have your not not just don't set your heart on doing certain things or going to certain places because you won't be able to you might not be able to do that um and also making sure you have travel insurance that covers covid and just generally being really sensible um, i'm not really sure what the situation is at the moment with hostels and everything but just being very careful when you're when you're out if covid is well it will it will still be around let's be honest how are you funding it? Part-time work or savings, etc. How did you overcome any worries you had, for example, seeing your friends go to grad jobs, etc. Okay, so how are you funding it? Um, I'm funding it by my savings. So yeah, because I, as, I, as I've said so many times, I planned this gap year for a long time. So I've been saving up for it for the past three years. And uh, that's something I would highly recommend to anyone who wants to take a gap year. Just as soon as you know you want to take a gap year, save as much as possible. Because the minute I knew I wanted to take a gap year, I saved at least 50% of any of my income, if not more, uh, to, to, to fund my gap year. So I am very lucky in the sense that I had enough savings to sustain me for the entire year. So this whole year, this whole gap year that I'm taking, I've got all the funds there ready and sitting there waiting. So that's what I'm that's what I'm using at the moment. And so I'm lucky that I have a job at the moment. So the job like the money that I'm earning with my job is just money that I'm saving and spending. So yeah, I'm not using I'm not relying on my job to fund this gap year. It's more that I had saved up for this gap year in general already so i've got that money behind me and the job that i that i have is just extra money that i'm saving and will hopefully sustain me for longer uh, to be on the road for longer and to travel to more places and to do more exciting things how did you overcome any worries you had okay so the second question i honestly i have just had these revelations uh going through third year and fourth year of uni and i because i, I already decided in my second year that i wanted to take a gap year after uni i I just I just knew I just knew it was right for me and I never really had any worries there was some kind of worries about being really old getting onto the job ladder etc but at the same time I've kind of reasoned my decisions and thought through my decisions a lot and just thought at the end of the day I could do a whole video on this and I'm, I might but at the end of the day when you're on your deathbed as morbid as I says I didn't want it to get morbid but when you are on your deathbed, you are not going to be thinking about the amount of money that you've been earning um, or that you have earned in your lifetime. You're going to be thinking about the experiences and the opportunities you've had and your just 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 memories that you've made and things you've done and places you've been to. And that's you know we are so young. There is absolutely no rush to go into a grad job role at all um, and I know there's so much societal pressure but that's what I want to use my channel to kind of dismantle it and show that there is you can do so many things outside of a grad job you don't have to go straight into one and i'm just seeing the next year or two years of my life um just investing in myself investing in developing my own skills traveling the world saying yes to more opportunities developing connections and just yeah but having this time for me and to really figure out what i want to do so that so that when it does come round to me applying for proper full-time jobs, um, I know exactly kind of what I want to do and I'm not just wasting my time on a two-year grad scheme because I was pressure pressured into applying for one and I wasn't even sure if I'd enjoy it and I would spend the next two years being trained and doing these things that are, oh, yes, maybe kind of interesting but not what I want to do for the rest of my life. So I'd rather spend these two years that I've given myself to figure things out for myself and to see what I really do want to do before committing myself to a big job, proper job um, that I don't enjoy. Because to be honest with you, most of my friends don't enjoy their jobs and they've gone into grad schemes and that's not that's not good, right? And there's no there's absolutely no rush. We're gonna be working for the next 40 years of our lives. And there is so much societal pressure, but again, I just want to show you that you don't you don't need to go into one of those grad schemes or grad grad roles if you aren't ready and if you're not sure what you want to do. Why did you decide to go on a second gap year? I think I've kind of answered that. I decided to go on a second gap year because I, there's no rush. There's literally no rush. I'm so young. I'm only 23 and most people who graduate are 21. There is literally no rush because I feel like this is why lots of people have, in the UK at least and probably America too, have been like caught mid quarter life and midlife crises because why are you rushing to a job at 21? Like, why are you working? Like, I, 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 it just boggles my mind like if you have other things you want to do and you want to experience other things you can there's there like <laughs> don't give in to societal pressure you absolutely can and there are ways around it when there's a will there is definitely a way
why did you choose Portugal of all places? I want to primarily, my main reason was because I want to improve my language and I am doing an intensive Portuguese language course with Portuguese Connection School who have been incredible. They've been absolutely amazing and I love, I love their lessons, I love their classes. It's so fun, it's so interactive and I feel like I've improved so much even though I've only had 24 hours of classes. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend. And also just the weather is so much nicer than in the UK. What are you doing for work? So I am working with a company, it's basically an edtech startup, and we I'm working on various different projects, but one of the main projects I'm working on at the moment is something called StudyStream. Uh, it's on Instagram at studystream underscore, and our website www.studystream.live. Essentially, we're trying to build an online platform for pre-uni and uni students. So we've got a 24-hour virtual library, so during COVID times, you can just log in, join the library, and study with lots of students from all over the world. We have have a study buddy accountability program where we will partner you with another student who is a similar age similar stage of education and studies similar subjects to you and kind of works at the same time as you do um, so you can keep each other accountable and keep track of your goals etc we have a residence area on the on the on the platform where you can connect with other students from literally all over the world we have personal admissions there's like lots of different things it's just an all-in-one place for students so go and check that out if you haven't already we are building it up and we are going to add lots of different new features so yeah it's, it's really exciting i really love it i love the team it's a very small team and i love that every day is different every day is different and constantly busy thinking about new things and yeah i really really enjoy it how do you make friends living abroad um so when i lived in rome i very much wanted to interact and make friends with people so i joined lots of the erasmus groups so i would join lots of whatsapp erasmus groups in rome whatsapp facebook groups and every time they hosted events and stuff i would go along and that's how i met most of my friends in rome who i hung, hung around with um, and also just at the uni here i'm obviously not studying i can still join in with the erasmus stuff like i'm still part of some of the erasmus groups um on facebook to see the events but i'm kind of I didn't really, I, I know it sounds really bad, I kind of wanted this time to be for me, I didn't want to go out and actively make friends uh, in these two months that I'm here because um, yeah I just I just needed this time for myself to be alone, to think about things, to yeah just, just to be alone and I'm very happy being alone at the moment um, but yeah I would say to make friends join Facebook groups honestly that's the way you can connect with people. I've also made friends through my language classes at Portuguese Connection School so quite a few of my friends that I go go out for dinner or lunch with a lot are from there. What do you like and dislike about living alone abroad? Uh, okay let's start with dislike. I dislike the fact that um, it can get lonely sometimes, it can get isolating um, and like it is nice to live with other people so I kind of sometimes I miss that aspect. If you get along with the people that you live with, um, what else do I dislike? I dislike that in Portugal there's no central heating and there's poor insula insulation so it's so cold it's getting so cold at night it's freezing like if I'm working in the night in in the evening um in the living room or I'm sitting just watching something on the sofa I have to bring my duvet or a blanket because it's so cold and like I'll be so snuggly and warm but then my hands will be freezing um that's what I hate I also don't like the struggle of having to as a content creator having to take pictures by myself it is such a struggle honestly and what do you like what I like is it's just so much so independent so much independence and I love just having this time for me to ponder and to reflect and to slow down and to just learn to be comfortable being by myself because yeah I think it's just been needed I've gone through a lot in the past two years and I have never really slowed down enough and I've always had the kind of guilty conscience of not doing work when I was at Oxford so having this time fully for me to fully reflect and think about everything and to just develop and grow as a person I I just love it I love being able to do whatever I want whenever I want everything is up to me that's what I also love I love just being able to do things on my own terms basically I just I just love it Hello, I'm thinking of taking a gap year, but I'm really scared about money management. What difficulties have you faced in budgeting and managing your finances? So I'm I'm a very, very good budgeter, uh, which is why I've managed to travel so much as a student as well when I was at uni. And I funded my first gap year and I'm funding this gap year. Just be really strict on your budget. Be flexible. When you're budgeting for your places that you're going to or your travel your travels for the year. So when I was planning this gap year, my plan A, which is is very very unlikely to happen at the moment i literally broke down every single country i'm going to go to how long i'm going to be there for how much i think i should spend every day or the total budget for the amount of time i'm going to be there and it's all done on this really big 
spreadsheet document thing that I've got going on. Um, that's not going to happen anymore though because of COVID, but I roughly know how much per month I should be spending and I stick to it. I try and stick to it as much as possible. I do give myself leeway. Basically, my main tips are keep track of all of your expenses as you go along honestly every day when i make a purchase i literally log it so just log everything to make sure you're sticking to your budget i also uh, have my mondo card which i use when i travel internationally and i literally only transfer my weekly budget to my mondo card and i can only use my mondo card so that's also a good trick that you can also do that with uni that i mentioned in my uni budgeting tips video but um yeah that they're good tips what are your current language goals and how proficient do you hope to become in Portuguese? So my current language goals, I want to be fluent in five languages, well, proficient in, fluent, fluency is very difficult, proficient in um, five languages by the time I'm 30. I'm now 23, I'm 23 and a half. Um, so I have, yeah, I have six and a half years. One of them is English though, so it's four, four other languages at the moment. One is Mandarin, Italian, French and Portuguese. And I'm hoping with Portuguese and, and then with Italian by default, I will get Spanish, so that's like an extra language, hopefully, hopefully. But um, yeah, I hope to to be proficient in all of those. Uh, my Portuguese language at the moment, I'm an A, I'm A1 at the moment in Portuguese, roughly, and I want to get to proficiency, proficient level, which is C1, basically. So um, yeah, I, I want to get to B2 slash C1. I don't know how long that's going to take, but I, I'm going to work really hard. They're my goals, though. I hope to get proficient in Portuguese uh, in a year or two's time, I hope, um, but who knows. How does tax work if you're working abroad? Um, okay. <laughs> this is something I've been figuring out. Basically, um, if you are just working remotely and you're not permanently a resident here, if you're just if you're just working abroad, it all depends on how long you stay in a country, basically. So you become a tax resident in any country if you've lived in that country or if you stay in that country for more than 183 days per year. So at the moment, that's fine with me. I'm, I'm still a tax resident in the UK, so I pay tax in the UK and it's fine for now. You should go on the government website though, that will give you um, a lot more information than I can give you. Any tips on looking for internships abroad? Thanks. Um, yeah, I used to be really good at this when I was looking for things uh, and international opportunities abroad when I was a student. So I might collate them all in a blog post. I just say Google, Google's your friend. It will take hours. I used to spend hours trawling online on Google, but just literally Google. Google is your best friend. Motivation in learning languages. I just have this motivation. I think communicate like languages and communication are literally the key to everything and to connecting with people. And I just love learning new languages. And you're just your mind is just opened up in so many ways. And I can't even even explain it. But when I think Mandarin, it's just so different. I just feel so much more comfortable talking about different topics. I just feel like I don't know. It's just so different when you can connect with someone and. It's just so nice to be able to speak someone else's language, language or speak another language in general. How do you travel on a budget as a uni student? I've done a whole video on this, so I'll leave the link in the description box and you can have a look how I traveled so much as a student. I just, just budget really well and find good deals. How do you find learning a new language? What are your tips as an adult learner? Um, I would say immerse yourself from the get-go as much as you can. Active recall, make sure when you're learning vocab you just test yourself constantly watch lots of tv shows in the original language even if it's dubbed and watch it with english subtitles because that helps you get used to the accent and you do pick up phrases and words doing that I, honestly i did that in portuguese for about a year and a half before i moved here and i think that's why i picked up portuguese a lot faster than some people in my class and why people have said like so many people have said to me I speak portuguese really well and when i tell them i've only been learning i've only had two weeks of classes i've only had 20 20 hours um no, not 20. Why do I keep saying 20 hours? 40 hours. I've had 40 hours. Sorry. 40 hours. I've had two weeks of classes. I've had 40 hours of Portuguese lessons. But they're really surprised because I have more confidence and I pick it up. I don't know. I just think because I've been so used to hearing the language and the sounds for the past year and a half and I've been watching these TV shows in Portuguese, it's just helped a lot. So I definitely recommend doing that. Listening to music in the original language as well. Um, trying to find people you can practice with um, online or on italki or something similar. Also my main tip is even if it's just five minutes a day, make sure you're doing that. Where five minutes of vocab every single day is going to help you so much more than cramming in an hour every fortnight um so just try and find five five to ten minutes every single day just doing vocab and you will actually progress a lot faster than you think how is living in portugal like oh it's so nice honestly it's so nice the people are so nice the food's amazing the quality of life's really good the weather's amazing yeah it's really good apart from the freezing cough flats but otherwise <laughs> it's really good i love it are you traveling slash living alone? Yes, I am. Have you solo traveled before and how do you deal with traveling alone? I have solo traveled before, so this isn't the first time. Um, my first time solo traveling, I 
well, it was in my first gap year. I was in China. I traveled, solo traveled for two weeks. I went to Rome by myself last year for three months. But again, I think this is different this time because I'm actually living alone, whereas those times I wasn't living alone and I knew people those times I was traveling. So when I was in China, I was visiting friends and seeing my students. And in Rome, I was living with other people and I was going to classes and stuff. So I, I made friends and I knew, I didn't know anyone in Rome, but I made friends in Rome and I was living with people. So I wasn't fully alone, whereas here I'm fully alone and I don't actually know anyone in Lisbon <laughs> or in Portugal at all. So yeah, it's different, um, but I, it's an experience and I am really enjoying it. How do I deal with traveling alone? Um, just gonna be extra careful, take extra precautions, make sure someone knows where you are at all times. If you were taking your gap year this year, COVID, what would you do? I would first of all decide what you want to do because if you want to stay at home and try and get a job um, or, or not get a job because I know how difficult it is at the moment but if you wanted to just stay at home I would use that time to develop new skills and take online classes, um, learn a new language, yeah just, just do something worthwhile and do something that's going to be stimulating and do something that is going to help your career prospects in the future so yeah that's what i'd recommend if you did want to do some kind of traveling i'd say decide what kind of traveling do you want to do do you want to do volunteering because there might be some programs um you could go on to and you'll be based somewhere for a set period of time and you'll do that if you did want to travel travel obviously that's it's more unlikely but um i, I mean i'm still gonna travel as much as i can in my gap year but um, yeah possibility is just literally moving abroad and um basing yourself somewhere for a couple of months doing an internship work experience or again just if you have the funds if you save up some kind of money um just move abroad and just do what i said that you should do at home just start a new course learn learn something new but in a different country and you can practice the language there as well so it's 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 easier than you think it is because you can just if you have just come out of school and you don't want to go and live alone somewhere in a new country you can literally live with other Erasmus students and just other students if you wanted to yeah and again my main tip is just being super flexible because you can plan a trip and it will get cancelled like for example I'm supposed to be going interrailing for 10 weeks in the spring in Eastern Europe and I've just accepted I've accepted that that's not happening I fully accepted that's not going to happen because all the different countries in Europe that I want to go to are probably going to have their own restrictions and I can't quarantine in every single one of them so I've accepted that's not going to happen and you know, I'm, I'm adapting my plans accordingly. So yeah, just be really flexible and make sure that you are aware of all the restrictions in place and make sure you're aware that if you do go traveling, there is a chance that either you'll have to quarantine on your return or you'll, you'll, there, is a, there is a chance that you get trapped in the country or the country goes into lockdown and you are trapped for a certain amount of time or you aren't able to go anywhere. I'm thankful at the moment that lo Portugal isn't in any official kind of lockdown and everything is still open. I can still do everything that I want. But yeah, that is just something to bear in mind. Anyway, this video I, see, I feel like has been very, very, very long, um, but hopefully you found it useful. And yeah, if you have any other questions or anything, leave them in the comments below and I'll try my best to get back to you. If you haven't already signed up to my blog newsletter, I try and send out all my recent blog posts and just life updates from me, travel tips from me. So subscribe if you want to. And yeah, let me know what kind of content you want to see because again, I, I really want to show people that straight out of uni you don't have to go into a grad job you don't have to go into any kind of job that you don't want to there's no pressure i mean there is a, there's a societal pressure obviously but th ugh, there's just so many options out there and your life honestly starts once you graduate or once you are in a position to figure out what you want to do next um and you can do that and without having to go into a grad job so yeah let me know what kind of content you want to see because i'm going to be planning it out Thank you so much for watching. If you watched this far, well done and hopefully see you in my next video. Bye.